You know, this episode of Barn Finds is one I'm particularly fond of because my dad used to have one of these. I used to have one of these. The car I'm gonna go and see is a Ford Granada, but not like this, and certainly not one that you've probably seen before. A very odd, quite rare special edition. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Anyway, on with the episode. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. It's in this garage here that the Granada lies. I don't think it's been out of here in 12 years. There it is. There it is. It fills this little garage, doesn't it? Where's the light? Yeah, it completely fills the garage. Because this was a big car. This was a big car for its time. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go and open that door, get a bit more light on it, and we'll see what what we're dealing with, what condition it is. But oh, I can see the Roman bronze trying to shine through the dust. Oh! Just put loads of dust out of my face. Gosh! Oh, look at this. It's so, so bronze. It's just brilliantly bronze. Now, if you saw the Granada that I drove in the intro, that isn't my car, sadly. That's actually Dave's, AKA Retro Ford Dave. Uh, and I thought I'd bring Dave along for this one because A, he doesn't live that far away. And B, when I told him about this car, you were like, oh. I did get a little bit excited, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and the fact that I, I'm confident that we might be able to get this car to fire up today. Have you, had you heard of a Chasseur Granada? I heard of a Chasseur Granada, but it, yeah, this, this here meant nothing to me until you mentioned to me that it was something to do with the Olympics. I believe it's something to do with the 1980 Olympics. So it's got this decal on the front wings and on the back. I don't think it's inside. Because it's the Chasseur, the interior was a proper event. Brown carpets, brown headliner, body coloured sunroof with this Chatham, I think they called it Chatham check, which is quite sort of padded. And then real leather. This is real leather, isn't it, Dave? It is, definitely. Definitely, yeah, look. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pump the tires up because they're all flat. Uh, hopefully the handbrake isn't seized on. We'll try and pull it out and then we will try and fire it up. We're not gonna look in the engine bay. No, I think we'll get it outside and let that be a, we'll have a reveal. The cameras will get what a better look. I've noticed this is, is on TDX rims. Now, to those, those viewers at home, as they used to say, <clears throat> that means it's on metric Yeah, we had tires. a, we had a, around in the 80s, the we were going all metric yeah and yeah i think maestros montegos yeah metros bmw yeah and they're very rare yeah i think the tires are astronomical oh the tires are about four times the price of a normal tire so this is on metric wheels and tires i think but of course you've got oh i've got to show you the uh, the luggage <laughs> Now look, A, look at the condition of the tailgate. Wow. Oh, it's clean. That just gives you an idea well, of what- I'm always it... drawn to this luggage, to be honest. Yeah, you oh, do. need to look at that. So one of, the, one of the features of the Chasseur is it came with a tailored luggage set, which fitted there and there, so a four piece. The interior was, a, was, was very unique for this car. And if you like brown and tartan, you're gonna love it. <laughs> And I do like brown and tartan, and I don't mind admitting it. Well, you could only buy the Chasseur as an estate. So it was estate only. Where chrome trim was, it's all black. Um, roof bars and stuff are standard. They were all 
um, auto is done. I think you, if you wanted injection or manual, you had to specially option it. But yeah, this this one this one I think could be a, a fantastic survivor. So this is Lynn, and Lynn, this is your stepdad's car, right? It is, yes. And I know it's been sat here for a little while, mm -hmm. but can, can you tell me a bit about the background of it? Because I know... Uh, yeah, so he purchased the car in um, 1981. Uh, the purpose of that was for him to um, tow their caravan. So that was its main duty. So once um, the touring was over and the caravan was, it would come back and it would go back into the garage until its next trip out. <laughs> so it was just used for towing? It was just towing used for towing. It wow, was, yeah, wow. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Um, and so they had many adventures in it. Um, and then in um, 2013, yeah. it gracefully came into retirement um, because they felt that they couldn't manage the um, touring caravan anymore. So they took on a, a static caravan. Okay, so they bought a static, yeah. no longer needed a tow car, no. but didn't sell it. No, they just kept it. And um, all I remember was that he religiously used to change the battery all the time and turn it over to keep it going. So he didn't use it no, since it never that came time? No, This is it as it went in. This My gosh. Yeah, to its day. So he's had it an awful long time. Mm -hmm. Was he always into cars and tinkering? Yeah, always into tinkering. He was very eccentric. He collected everything. Um, he never had one of anything. He always had two of everything and a spare. So they used to have a Wolseley, which I think I've told you about. And then we have a spare Wolseley parts everywhere. So <laughs> You've got Wolseley bits in there? We have, yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, he used to, he always had a bit spare just in case. Brilliant, brilliant. I love the fact that you, the garage has got two side doors. Yes. And you said to me, oh yeah, it didn't fit in the garage. No, that's right. Um, so the original garage didn't house it. So um, because he wanted it so much, he built a bigger garage. <laughs> so he's had to add yeah. basically a door's width and, exactly. and add the bricks because on. Because he wanted it so much. But he did that? He did, because yeah. he was a builder. That was his background. Okay, yeah. okay. I mean, my, my dad had one of these, uh, not this edition. Uh, and I, I'm, I have fond memories of it because it was just so effortlessly kind of powerful and comfortable mm. so it would have been a perfect tow car it was my mum used to say that you should sit in it and then when they were going out it was just like you didn't feel like you was going anywhere because it was so comfortable and it just it, breezed along yeah that they just used to sit in there and she used to feel like royalty driving around <laughs> in it have you ever driven it oh no no have you been in it uh no only just recently to have a little snoop about inside really uh, yeah because obviously dad passed away um a couple of months ago um, so we've been looking through everything just to try and sort things out. And obviously that's when it's all come to light. So um, I think he'd like nothing more than to see this brought back to how it used to be and his memories, really. Yeah. It well, it'd be great. I have a suspicion that today we're going to, we'll dig it out. We'll, we'll clean it down. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll probably be in rather good condition because yeah. it looks like it's, He's preserved it well. Yeah, yeah, it is. He obviously cared about it enormously. He did, yeah, he did, yeah. He, that's one thing he did do, yeah. He used to sort of be up here tinkering for ages and, you know, like I say, changing the batteries and whatnot. So. I can see there's a boot full of stuff, like is, potions yes, and the, cloths. In the, in the back, so I've had a little look in there because I was looking for something the other day, so I've had a sneaky look inside, <laughs> but, yeah, so. I think what we'll do is we'll start taking some of the bits off it. Yeah. And we might be able to, to, to fire it up and... Yeah, that'd be good. And get it running. Let's let's pump the tires up. Yes, yes, my beauty. Oh. It's longer than I remember. <laughs> Gosh, it looks good. I've got to get under it. 
been a while since I've been under a Granada. In fact, last time I was under a Granada, I was doing a, putting a new gearbox in mine on New Year's Day. In the frost. Now that we've got it into the, um, the sunlight, have a bit of a closer look in the boot. I've borrowed, I've borrowed a broom because just like my dad's, the struts never held the tailgate up properly and he used to carry a broom around. So as we showed you before, these two either side hold alls color coded to the car in bitter chocolate. These are a special feature of the Chasseur model and they're here. They're present and correct along with some old carpets and a little tool bag and how many blankets? One, two. Oh bless, you've got one of these concertinas for the windscreen on a hot day. Oh, yes, yes. What I'm really keen to see is how well preserved this carpet and this, and then maybe the spare wheel is, because it looks brilliant. Some beautiful old tools in here. Probably use some of this transmission fluid. Look at that. Carpet's absolutely because it's been in a garage with, with hardly any windows, well, there's net curtains over the windows. The rubbers are in good condition. There's no UV damage that I can see on the upholstery. It's wonderful. And look at the, look at the paintwork underneath this boot floor area. Looks amazing. So look, the Chasseur model has these sort of holsters built into the fabric. And then you pull each one out and then inside you can, you can keep your salted nut mix. <laughs> so these are these two are removable and the other two aren't. I've never seen a Chasseur before. They made a Chasseur Sierra, which is obviously a later car than this. And I do remember that. I think that was quite popular, two-tone blue or blue and silver, but do not remember the, the Granada Chasseur. If you remember this special edition, tell me in the comments. There's the, the spare Michelin TRX with the uh, gold coloured alloy. You can see there's a bit of evidence of a mouse and the extra wiring for the bar, which is remember, that's what this car was bought for for the towing caravan duties. Deep in the pine forests of Europe lie some of the most grueling tests ever devised by man. Chambers that sear at 22 degrees above boiling point and can freeze to minus 40. Machines that shake, pull and stretch 200 times a second. All these tests of endurance were built by Ford to test the Ford Granada. A car engineered to be durable and reliable. A car engineered to be quiet and comfortable. Love it in here. You can always tell. One way I can always tell a car has been well looked after is it has mats and then it has another set of mats over the mats to protect the mats. And this has that, especially in the back, I haven't been there yet. So the Chasseur in here is what makes the Chasseur special actually, as well as the two-tone outside and the slightly different wheels and stuff. In here, you've got this amazing tartan, which is Chatham tartan or Czech, with real leather seats, which is, you know, a big deal for a car like a Granada. And the interior looks like it's been really well preserved. Brown headliner, brown carpet, brown carpet on the bottoms of the door panels. It's glorious. It's really, really 
feels really special in here. Loads of tax discs. 1996, 98, 97, 99, 05. So I'll put those with the service history because there's service history. What I do know, and I, I found some info about the Granada, I've actually found the options list. Optional equipment on the chasseur available. Air conditioning, which they think this one has, but I don't know where the air con button is. Music, heated rear window, rear wiper. Extra cost, driving lamps, front fog lamps, it does have those. Air conditioning, the 2.8 fuel injected engine and manual transmission are also available at additional cost. Stereo radio cassette, it does have that. A Sanyo precision quartz clock in there as well. And it's got like this radio hold function here now i don't know if this is factory fit it definitely looks factory fit in here with the the wood veneer and the wood veneer is mint let me read you an extract the chasseur is a rare kind of car monday to friday it's a luxurious businessman's express but come the weekend you've got an estate that can pull carry virtually anything to amuse yourself from hang glider to caravan which is what this was used for racing car or horse box not to mention hordes of children Inside, you'll find the unique leather upholstery with Chatham fabric inserts. It's got electric windows, and for your entertainment, there's a four-speaker radio cassette system. It's the kind of car that will waft you about your business in an atmosphere of such refined luxury, it's easy to forget you're driving an estate car. Then Friday night, it's time to pack whatever you need for the weekend in the back, or the built-in roof rack and head for the wide open spaces. And that's when the chasseur with all its capacity and abundant power really comes into its own. Sweet, the Ford Granada chasseur, how to mix business with pleasure. A car with all round independent suspension. A car engineered to be sure footed and to cope with the worst moods of nature. The luxurious new 1980 Granada puts the emphasis on engineering. Take one for a test drive. So Dave, is the bonnet release on your side? Yes, my side. So we haven't had a look at the engine yet. We know it's a 2.8, because they all were. We know it's auto, because you can see that from the stick. But we don't know if, if it's injected. Something that's troubling. Carburetor. Me. Troubling I, me already. What? We, we have an 80s immobilizer. Oh, has it got a key fob? Oh, yeah, that could the be easy fit. Aftermarket. Yeah. Immobiliser. Yeah. Let's hope that it's not a complicated one or that it just works and it's absolutely fine. Yeah. This is great. So, are we saying carburetor? I, I would say, I mean, it was an option to fuel inject this, this model. I've got the options list. I printed it out that I found. I'm going to say it's probably carb. I kind of hope it is because it'll be a bit easier for us. Yeah. R Carburetta. Carburetta. Peerberg, if I remember. I don't like the extra wiring because that will be to do with the 80s immobiliser, won't right. it? Yeah, yeah. No water. No. Okay. I wouldn't be unduly worried, as long as it's that amp free, isn't it? Yeah. There Here's we... the easy fit. Remote controlled one wire alarm system. One wire. Right. You're right, Peerberg, you win. Okay. I said okay. Solex, you said Peerberg. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, 80s alarm. The Intruder 2000. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's the fuse for the siren. I traced this, this lead, look. That lead's non-existent. This lead here's non-existent. So that is the only... The only lead going to it. That is the it. only lead going to it, right? So if that's got a f an inline fuse in it... So potentially, potentially that, that's just going to kill the ignition line. It should still give so us enough. If you connect it, and if it's still... Making a noise. If it makes a noise, and it's witchcraft. magic. It's absolute witchcraft. Right. So okay. witchcraft uh, hasn't happened. And we can see if we get dash lights. Yeah, we've got dash lights. On. The mileage is 49,999 miles. I bet you that's real. Yeah, so 
Should should it, it should we drive it up and down the street? It it will do fifty thousand. Wow. Ordinarily, I probably wouldn't, as much as I like them, I probably wouldn't feature a regular Mark II Granada that's been sat in a garage. As much as I love them. This, this car's different. I haven't got accurate sales figures from Ford. I did try, but there's rumor that there were no more than 500 of these sold in UK and Europe. So pretty rare when new, and now incredibly rare, especially with all of its chasseur additions. Fat spark? Yeah, good, real good spark. Great. <laughs> You know what I haven't done? No. Oh, leave that on. Oh, don't. Stop it, Dave. We're supposed to be good at this. Yeah, we're professionals. That's only on three cylinders. Yeah, so that will fire. It will yeah. fire. We've drained as, as much fuel out as we think is safe. We've put a gallon and a half in of fresh. We're just gonna have one last little purge, but, but then we'll put a new fuel line on, fuel filter on, and then we'll see if it'll start properly and idle properly. Ready? Yeah? I've got, I've got a dog. Okay. Oh, oh, hang on, it's in neutral. My, my, my fault, my fault. Battery's weak. Yeah. I just pack on this as well. It will fire up. I know it will and it will be happy. I can just tell. Yep. The battery's not good enough, is it? Come on, Granny. Yes, no. Yes. Oh my word! That's beautiful, isn't it? Oil is good. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Wait, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. That sounded lovely. It did, yeah. Yeah. Condensation, bit of soot. That's really nice. Not a good one, but it ran like that. 
not a tapping noise inside. No, there. and that's without the air cleaner on. Yeah. Stone cold. That's stone. That's stone. Let's have a check. That's really nice. Oh, that's well, there we go. We've proved that it does run. So, with a couple more hours of work, it'll probably be ready to run safely all day, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We've done, we did it, you know, we tried yeah, to do it in a... I think we'll put a little bit of water in it and maybe get it up to temperature. Yeah, great idea. That's Lovely, awesome. the chasseur is alive. It's not essential, but I thought I'd just see if we can give it a quick clean before we lose the light, just to see how good it is. I can see there's a little bit of um, like a light accident damage on the front balance there, a little bit of crust on one arch, but you know, it's a 40 year old car. 41, nearly 42. This is when you get to see the real Roman bronze shine through. A classic color for a Granada with the pinstripes. So you can see this is a pre-facelift Mark II which I think they facelifted it in 81 or 82. So it's got thinner, kind of like more dainty bumpers. Simpler grill. Look at that decal. That's one of the things that makes it special. That two-tone bodywork with the gold wheels, the pinstripes, the blacked out chrome areas around the window frames. There's a bit, you can see there's a few scabs on the sunroof, which is body colored, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all, you know. Look at that two-tone. So only the lower doors were Tuscan beige on the chasseur. You never see them. Even Ford fanatics don't know much about them, it seems. And that's why I had to come and look closer at this particular model. These are one of the things that came as standard with the chasseur the full roof bar set up with the loading rails. Remember when estate cars were practical and like had massive boots and were a good shape? This is a good shape car. This is a very good shape car. And this car is actually going to be for sale. So Lynn and, and, and Rita, the family, are looking to rehome this car. And I'm not going to lie, I'm tempted. like to finish these barn finds with a car that's running if possible and the chasseur has been amazing we've managed to strike it up and it's running really happily it's it's gone up to temperature there's no brakes but you've managed to get reverse oh no it was running absolutely fine it's probably run out of fuel we've, got no battery on. we've run out of battery uh, spare batteries and we've run out of fuel but it runs it drives and it's actually a very very solid beast so what a what a fantastic thing to have just sat there all this time, well preserved and looked after. Just goes to prove, you know, look after something, it will probably look after you. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching this Barn Fine episode of The Late Break Show. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Uh, maybe put in the comments below, what do you think of this? Or maybe you know of a car that's been sat in hibernation all this time and it deserves another shot at life. Get in contact with me through the website.